You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Can we still find God in the series created by someone who doesn't believe in him? We're going to answer that question today on a very special episode of Systematic Geekology. We are the priests of the geeks. We are going to be talking specifically today about the religions found within Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire. This idea was brought to us by none other than my host for this episode, my co-host, Kino. How you doing, Kino? I'm well. I'm well, Christian. Uh, listen, listen. Ha! Ah, that last episode we did on Game of Thrones was so good. I'm excited that we decided to go down this rabbit hole. And Alice, I want to see what type of Wonderland creatures we're going to come up with today. <laughs> Well, let's go chase that white rabbit then. Let's go. Let's go. I'm all for it. I am all for it. All right. So, Kino, what have you been geeking out on recently? Uh, Oh, I just uh, watched um, The Mandalore. Okay. So so that's what I've been geeking out on. I've I've watched it every, well, it's every Thursday because I use it to watch when I go to the gym uh, while I'm on the treadmill. Give me a good 30 minute, good cardio workout. Uh, which helps and it pushes me, and uh, that's that's what I've been geeking out on is the Mandalorian, and and oh, buddy, it did not, it did not disappoint at all. Yeah, I really enjoyed the last episode. I had my gripes, but at the end of the day, it's good Star Wars. It's it good is. fun. It I'm is. I'm having fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so me, I uh, had mentioned before that I've been going through all the original Twilight Zone. I finished that. Okay. And now I'm in the '85 Twilight Zone, which. It's okay. It's not as good as the older one, but there's some there's some gems among everything there. So so forgive me for not knowing, but I don't know anything about Twilight. Okay. okay. I, just know, I just know that there's two groups, vampires and <laughs> that is all I know. Now different Twilight. Twilight oh, Zone. Oh, oh, you said Twilight Zone. You did say Twilight Zone. <laughs> you said Twilight. He brought up Twilight. It's like Oh, you know me. I just love I, I get with Edward or or Jacob. Like I have to figure it out. <laughs> oh, oh this is a great start. Oh, I love oh. it. Okay, okay. Never mind. Twilight Zone. I, I know exactly where you are, <laughs> Chris, I'm Christian. I was like, okay, we're, we're on Twilight now. Okay, all right. Hey, just, hey, 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 no shame. I've read all the books. I believe if you have to criticize something, which I have a lot of criticisms against it, you got to read the source material. Yeah, so I've read the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But Twilight Zone. The 85 series is still pretty good, in my opinion, not as good as the original. Yeah. All right. So let's go to our episode yeah. about Twilight today. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to talk about the religions within the world of Westeros. And obviously, if we're going to talk about the religions, we've got to talk about the person who made them in the first place and what he was inspired by. And that being, of course, George R. R. Martin. Now, Martin, when he was asked in an interview, has, says, has this to say about himself. He says, I suppose I'm a lapsed Catholic. You would consider me an atheist or agnostic. I find religion and spirituality fascinating. I would like to believe this isn't the end and there's something more, but I can't convince the rational part of me that that makes any sense whatsoever. So, Kino, how do you feel about what Martin says here? So so let's deal with, I'm a stickler for words, what people say. I'm I'm a a stickler for what people say. He he called himself a lapsed Catholic. And I'm like, I'm sorry. But uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but but uh, Catholics is like the blood and crypts. Once once you in, you in. Ain't ain't no ain't no getting out of it. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Ain't, ain't no ain't no get. Like literally, you can say what you want, but when he not trying to be funny, but when he dies, he can still receive a Catholic uh, funeral mass. He could. Yes, he could, could even though he considers himself uh, atheist and agnostic. Uh, so I'm like, he's a lapsed Catholic. That says a lot that you have a problem with the Catholic Church. And, and I'm not saying um, if anybody's Catholic, uh, listen, I love Catholicism. I love the ritual. I love the history. I love the tradition. That there's a lot of there's a lot of hidden gems in Catholicism that I think a lot of Protestants don't know because that we just believe that it's just you know it's the Bible. And that's it. You know, we don't need no mediator, no no priest, no father, no, no pope, and that stuff. Yeah, I get that. But but when we talk about the mysticism and the spirituality and the the, the, the way they 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 the way they approach grace and the the workings of the soul, there's some stuff that we can consider. We can stuff we can consider. But but Martin being a lapsed Catholic, I 
I understand. See, see, if he, if he would have said I was a lapsed Baptist or Pentecostal, then I would like, okay, I can understand what your gripe is. But with Catholicism, I think he just wanted to say he just don't like his particular priest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just probably say he don't like his particular priest or his bishop. That's now, that's my thoughts. You brought up a good point earlier. It's like uh, Protestants, when it comes to learning about Catholicism, we kind of suck. I mean, I can't remember the last time I heard someone mention Catholicism, except to be like, hey, at least we're not them. Yeah. You know, in a Protestant setting, like I had to do my own research when it came to this. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like, yeah, sure. I love researching things. But mm-hmm. wouldn't it have been nice to have had you know a nice day where we said, OK, why do we believe that Martin Luther was right to do what he did? Right. And that never happened once. And these are even the best churches I've been to. Mm. So as far as that's concerned, yeah, I, I see your point immensely. Now, as far as Martin is concerned, I mean, I see a man who grew up in this setting and just rejected it. And he had other feelings on the matter. And that's that's just where he ended up. Yeah, I think I think I I don't remember how old he is, but I think he came up during the time where the famous book God is Dead came about Mm. the 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 rejection of authority and everything. And we got to remember that in the Catholic Church, the, the, the church is the ultimate authority and the the priests and the bishops, those in the hierarchy of the church, uh, represents that authority. And so, yeah, so I, I get, I get, I get his gripe, I get his uh, issues with the church and hierarchy. Because listen, everybody got a boss, and you can say what you want, even though, even though the Pope wears whites, there's still some people that don't like the Pope in the Catholic Church. There's some yes. folks, there's some folks in the Vatican that don't like him, but they respect him because you know that's what it is. But, but that. Him saying, you know, finding religion and spirituality fascinating. That's that's yes, I'm right there with you. But but to to deny to deny the idea that God is supreme, God is ultimate, God is um, it, there. It to deny that there is no God, I feel shame. But I understand why he would say that because again, how the the how faith is being introduced to those of Catholics like you're born into this into this group that you go and do the rituals and you do these things and nobody tells you why you're doing it why why is, why is it important unless you ask those questions and then you then come up and then like the priest comes and tells you what you need to do and you got to pray and 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 you know repent and they always ask when was the last confession and I'm like it was 1996 on a cold Wednesday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I say all that to say that I understand his stance. Yes. On religion, I do get that. I do, and especially his gripe with the Catholic Church, I do. Um, but but to throw everything out with the the baby with the bat, the bed or the bathwater, what's the saying? You know, you can't. <sighs> I don't know. I just I. I, I I see God in everything. I don't I don't I don't know how else to to see this world because that to me. Okay, no, I'm gonna just stop right there. I'm gonna start right there because because <laughs> we're talking. We try to get into this thing, and then I, I hey, hey, it's okay. <laughs> this is our show. We can do whatever we want, you know. True, true, true. But I, listen, listen, listen. The whole the whole point is that there's a lot of folks who agree with him, though. Yes, that, absolutely. That, that and this that's the thing is that there's a lot of folks, and I'm and I'm. And I'm praying, my prayer is that that how you was introduced to God is not how God is. Yes. That was just so that was a that was the avenue that 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 someone else brought God to you, however it was, but that's not the full sum, sum total of, of, of who he is. And I think that um I fought Protestants, I had to say this, I fought Protestants to saying that God is only in the book. God is not in the book. God is being revealed. Through the book, <laughs> but the book is not because there's there are some folks who will hold the book as God. <laughs> oh yeah, and and so and so no 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 so so I I get I get it but but I don't I don't want anyone to ever think that w- their particular faith tradition or uh, faith tradition or or doctrines is the right way. No, the only thing the only thing that I believe and I hold fast to. Is that as long as this, this, this? I always say this to my church members: is about any church, Christian church. As long as they're doing two things, I ain't got no problem with them. As long as they're doing baptism and communion, I have no issues. I have no issues because those are the two things that Jesus said that we ought to do. Mm-hmm. Anything else, 
Yeah, we can argue about that, but as long as we're doing those two things, that lets me know that you are still holding fast to what he said, and you're bringing in new members into the household of faith. Hey, that's it. Oh, yeah. I think for me, the smoking gun and what he has to say about where he's at is that the point where he would like to believe, but he can't convince the rational part of himself. This as this is someone, is this me criticizing him parts as a writer? Is that I see no hope in a lot of his books. I mean, there no hope is a terrible way to putting it. There is some hope, but there's not a lot of hope. And I see this as a man who's wrestling with his faith where where he is in the world. I don't see think he has any hope. And if I may just you know, toot my own horn here. My favorite sermon I've ever delivered, and it's not a lot of those that I've done, was on the Greek myth of Pandora and the hope that Jesus brings and how in the original Greek myth, they saw hope being introduced in the world as a terrible thing because they had nothing to hope in. But we look at that now from a modern perspective, you know, with Christ's resurrection and go, oh, hope is a wonderful, beautiful thing. But that's just a cultural difference there. And for him, when I look at his books, like I see a man who just doesn't see hope in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's a very oh, that's a great great point. Cause I and I can understand why you wouldn't find hope because if you're going to if you're going to mass every day and the priest is reading from the book that the that the church or the diocese is set down and you're following the lectionary and you're doing the chants and you're doing the prayers and you're doing just the the, the monotony. I get it. That 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 becomes boring. That becomes boring. I, I get it, but but that doesn't that doesn't mean that that's where God. Let me let me say this: that doesn't mean that's where God stays. Yes, He I might be agree. found there, but it doesn't mean He stays there. Yeah, there are plenty of other avenues to find Him. Yeah, and those can be very useful ways to look at Him and to see Him and have Him reveal Himself. But there's so much more. It is so much more. Oh my gosh, it's so much more. I, I'm I'm fascinated by how much I see God move in the lives of people that were once unaware and now they have come to an awareness and their lives have changed. Mm. That's 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 all that we're looking for, just to change your life. Not listen, I can't save you. Okay. I cannot save you, nor do I have a heaven or hell to put you in. All I can tell you is what Jesus said. And that's it. Okay. That's what she, that's, that's, that, that's, <laughs> that's hey, it. Preacher, preacher, preacher. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I, I can't, but, but, but to, to have no hope again, I can understand, again, I can understand how being a part of that, that particular faith tradition can suck the hope out of you. It can, it can, because there is, there is little room for divine inspiration. In the mm-hmm. moment, in the yes. moment, in the moment, in the moment, because they do believe in in the Holy Spirit. They do believe that they're being guided by the Holy Spirit. And I'm, not, I'm not saying no to that. I'm, no, I'm saying that's that's what they believe and that's what they're doing. And then I can't say yes or no to that. That's what they got. Yeah, no. So so, but he, it's okay. It's okay. He 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 needs a hug. That's what it is. Okay, <laughs> George, I, you ain't wrong. Judge George needs a hug, and he needs a hug where he gets to cry it out. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Well, if we ever see him, we know what to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be like, come on, just bring it in, George. Just bring it in. Just, just come on. Just come on. All right. So obviously, Catholicism isn't the only branch of Christianity that has lapsed members. Like, wh- what is it about church culture in general that kind of creates so many atheists and agnostics who were once former members? The the, the abuse of leadership. Mm. It is the abuse of leadership. It's never. It is never. It is never the worship. Think about it. It's never Sunday morning. It's the folks who are participating that causes the other folks to leave. And I, I believe it's it's leadership. Literally, I don't care what tradition or denomination it is. People are leaving the church because I believe not only is it hard to find authenticity in in church, but it's hard to even. <laughs> It's hard to even see God because we put the we put the pastor or the preacher on this pedestal as the one who is speaking to us. And so our emphasis is on that man or that woman and never on the message. Yes. And I think I think that's that's because because, again, this this what helps me feel OK about everybody is to just say that you are just as crazy as I am. 
Absolutely. Now, 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 granted, there might be different degrees of craziness. Okay. You might be far worse than I am. I might be far worse. It doesn't matter. But, 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 but we all, we are all messed up in some way, shape, form, or fashion. We are all are. And anybody that says that they're good, no, they're, they're lying to themselves. And so I think that the idea of what church should be, the sacred space of where we should come and commune, that has been lost as well. Because uh, it's, I, mean, I don't have to discuss, but okay. So, so membership is down because because the leadership. And my my next point that I'll say is because that there are other things that are competing on Sunday. Because mm. because I have I have a young family. I I, I got to tell you the story. I don't know if I ever have I ever told this story on here. I don't think so. So I have two sons, and they're both teenagers right now, and they were they were playing little league baseball, and I will never forget. They used to have baseball practice on Wednesday nights and baseball game on Sundays. Now, for those who don't know, I am active in ministry. So Wednesday (laughs) is Bible study and Sunday is Sunday morning service. And so that was a struggle for us when my kids growing up of what do we do? Do we go to church? Or do we go to go we play baseball? I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. I still chose baseball because this church is going to be there. I, I'm paying for you to play. So we we going to baseball. We going, we going to baseball. If I'm paying this money, we going to baseball. But but it was that was a hard to try to figure out how do we navigate that? Mm. How do we navigate that? Because the norms of culture has changed because 30 and 40 years ago, there was nothing for you to do on Sunday because most of the stores were closed, restaurants were closed. You had, you had football on Sunday, you had church. That was it. That was it. Um, well, let me rephrase, in the South. Yes. In the South. Now, I don't know in, in, in Midwest or the West or the North, but I know in the South, it shut down. It shut down, especially the Bible Belt. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what I think about this question, Kino? I think I'm going to fire whoever wrote it, being me, of course, because I worded something poorly and I only recognize this as I'm reading it. I think the word I used creates so many atheists and agnostic is awful. Huh. It should be confirms. Because guess what? If God had wanted them to be saved, they'd have been saved, regardless of the church culture there. Now, the church culture doesn't help. If anything, like I said, it confirms where they're already at to be away from the church, to be away from God and to live their own lives. And I think that what you you hit it on the nail pretty well, is that it's the culture we have around the pastor is the culture we have around how sacred we hold that day. And to be honest, we don't always do that well. And we just, we got to realize like, look, pastors of people, they suck just as much as us. They're just as sane as us, as you so eloquently put it earlier. Like it is very true. Everyone has their own brand of crazy and everyone's on different methods where they're at in that craziness. And to think that there's one person out there who's just so much better than all of us, we're missing the point because there's only ever been the one. Yeah, no. So, so here, here's for the here, here for someone who wants to know what it's like to be the pastor of a church. Think about, think about, you know what? Since we, since we own this, think about sitting on the Iron Throne, okay? Yeah. Watching people trying to help people navigate, and while you're still sitting on that, there are people who are mad at whatever decision that you make. There are people who are excited about the decision that you make. There are people who will question any and everything. There are people who be like, wait, so this doesn't make sense. Here's my point. People need to remember that we are all faulty and flawed. And it is only by his grace that we can do what we do. That, 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 that. And, and and there is there is there is there is no greater platform that is seen when you have a pastor who understands grace because you come you encounter people who will tell you to your face, hey, I'm going to do this X Y and Z, and then don't do it. They say, hey, I want you to come, or they 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 don't they don't they don't show up. They 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 say, or or you have folks who who will who will come to you and saying, well, let's do this program. Let's do this program. You'd be like, all right, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. And then when it's time for them, they want you to do it. They want you to do everything. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I am just one person. 
I'm not going to do the idea that you suggest. I'm going to support you in that. But no, they want me. They want me to do. It. I'm not. I'm not. Finna, I am not your errand boy. I'm not your. I. I'm not your ideal person because that's that's what they treat pastors. If if you want to know the understand the dichotomy, the dichotomy of pastors, read "Create a Healthy Pastor" by what's his name? Not creating a healthy church. I'm sorry, creating a healthy church. Uh, oh, I can't think of the author's name. Save my life. I'm gonna get it at the end. Um, but but in there, it talks about how it's family systems. It talks about how the pastor has his own family. And he is a part of his own extended family. And then the church uh, in of itself is, is, is another family. And when I began to see that, oh, he helped me to, to deal with people. I was like, you know what? Y'all, y'all just brothers and sisters just fighting over who can get the last cookie. <laughs> 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 who can get the last cookie? But Is it how to build a healthy church? It's, it's, creating, it's creating a healthy, healthy church. Um, I want to say Richard something. Um, I could, but 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 I'm gonna pull it up on my Amazon because that's that's where I got it from. Oh, Richard Richardson. Oh, excuse me, Ronald Richardson. Ronald Richardson. That's him. Okay, that's him. There we go. That's him. found that's, it. That's the guy. That's the guy. But 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 the thing the thing that folks don't remember is when I come out the pulpit, I'm still a person. I'm still a person. I get tired. I get frustrated. I get angry. I get disappointed. I grieve because because I love the fact that a lot of People don't think that the preacher grieves when a member's lost, when they have to do the funeral, but that affects the preacher just as much as it affects the family, because that was their member too. <laughs> so, yes, but we don't we don't think about these things, and so to it, to help understand to humanize it all, people we are we are all just people. We're all just people. I'm sorry, I went off on a long tangent. Once again, Kino, it's okay. It's our episode. We can do whatever we I, want. I, I know, but I'm trying to stay on because there's some stuff I want to talk about, though. <laughs> We're going to so, get there. Okay. All right. You know what? Let's go, let's transition. Mm. So we started off real good, talking about George R. R. Martin, where he stands, what we think about that. But let's actually get to the meat of the issue, and that being the religions of Westeros. Now, obviously, there are a lot. So we're not going to get to every single one in this one. We had to cut things down because Kino and I could talk forever about this. Oh, my gosh. We could just, and to respect – we can yeah. just pick one faith tradition and then spend two hours talking about that. <laughs> just one. So to respect your time and to respect Josh's time so he doesn't have to keep recording this, yeah. excuse me, editing all this, we are just going to be focusing on, I believe I have five on my outline. So we're going to start with our first religion, and that's going to be the old gods. Now, obviously, we start in the north. We got the Stark family, and this is typically going to be what they're going to be worshiping. And who are the old gods? Well, it's hard to say. Not everyone gets a name. I'm fairly certain we don't get a lot, if any, in the series. But they were first worshipped by the children of the forest and then later by the first men who would come to the land of Westeros and take uh, over this and have a little pact with the children of the forest. Now, Martin, when he said he was creating this uh, religion, said he based it on religious rites, uh, typical in Druidism, animism. And he also kind of put in a couple facets of Celtic and North mythology, and as well as modern Wicca. So, you know, what do you have to say on this old God kind of religion we have in the North? It, it I, again, I, I'm, I'm respect, I'm respective of all people's faith traditions um, in Westeros because the old gods protected the north <laughs> the old gods helped them defeat the wait is it the wickers no it's not the wickers what's the, what's the uh white walkers not the white walkers what they call in the book oh the others the others yes they're called others yeah 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 and and so so i understand why the north would always honor the old gods because the old gods has helped the north stand yeah yeah. Now, now, I'm not I'm not fully versed in Celtic uh, mythology or um, Wicca. No, I'm not. I mean, I know. I, I I I I don't know much. Okay, that's fair. That 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 and and so I I can't really talk on what it is between those two. Um, but if if I look at and go through the, the odd lens of Game of Thrones, it seems as though that Wiccas 
and the Celtic uh, mythology spends a lot of emphasis on the um, elements, earth, water, moon, stars. They uh, they pl- place a lot of emphasis on um, these entities. They're praying to them to have them to intercede in human hum- human behavior or wishes to try to get them to get a favorable outcome, whether it be more rain, be to have kids or whatever it is. So, so that's, yeah, but I realize, yeah, just, I realized talking to you, I was like, I don't know much. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, like, look, I don't know as much as I would like to, like I've studied Celtic mythology before. Uh, you go through like your Kukulains and stuff like that. Your, your Gias is where we get code Gias from. Mm. I know you big anime guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where that originates from is Celtic mythology. Okay. Uh, as far as Wicca is concerned, the first time I remember Wicca ever being brought up within a was it Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost, and there's a character, one of the the hex girls, who says that she's one sixteenth Wicca. Which, by the way, there are a couple things very wrong with that. I know we're way off topic, but who cares? If she's one sixteenth Wicca in like the late '90s, early 2000s, that's really bad. Because it didn't start until like the 20s and 30s. Now, they'll, they'll say this is just ancient stuff. No, it's it's been reappropriated. It's been appropriated to a, for a more modern era. Mm. But also, how are you one sixteenth of a religion? Of a religion. Sorry, I had to talk about that. that. It was on my mind. That don't, know, that don't make no sense. You can't be one sixteenth of a religion. Yeah, one sixteenth I'm, I'm practice. Like, I'm like, how does, that, how does that map out? Like, so... Is your mama a wicker? Are your daddy a wicker? Is your <laughs> grandmama one and your granddaddy ain't one? I don't, I don't, I don't. Uh, if it doesn't give me money from the government, I don't care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. But, but I will go back to the old gods in, in the series. Like the idea that the first men, it is fascinating that even throughout the realm, there were those. Werewood, tree, I think that's what it, the werewood, werewood trees. Werewood yes. trees. They were throughout the realm, throughout the realm, and 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 they, there would they those trees were still respected. The old guy was still respected throughout the realm, even though you had the religion of the seven, the yes. face of the seven. So so it it is interesting that even though that is a northern, um, more religion, it was still respected throughout the realm up until you got to Dorn. I think that's where it stopped at. Yeah, it's mostly the werewolves are still active mostly in the north from what I read, but there are pockets of very small werewood trees in southern regions of mm-hmm. the continent. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So, I mean, like, obviously we get characters like the Bran and the, the Raven who are connected in some way mystically. We see they have actual power they to do. some extent. Or, I mean, could this just be magic that is making people look like gods? I mean, have you played Dragon Age? I have not. Okay. But this is not a, it's a huge spoiler, but who cares? It You find in the early games, it's like, hey, like the elves, we used to be like this very peaceful people. We were in contact with the spirits. It was all very nice. And you find out in the third game, it's like, no, they used to be a bunch of slavers too. They enslaved men and elves. And men were sla- enslaving men and elves, and ah. two bad empires fought each other, and they lost their power. Ah, so it's kind of similar in that regard. Yes, could, it is. It could be like it could be men in the past wielded this magic. The children of the forest helped them, and they just looked like gods to regular people. Or they could actually be like there is legitimately something they hold mm-hmm. as magic is slowly returning to the world. So whether that's the old gods, whether it's just men being men, who knows. Could 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 the 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 um, decrease in the faith in the old gods could it have been attributed to the children of the forest creating the White Walkers? I could definitely see that, especially as they're being pushed back by the men, the first men, and like this is a last desperate attempt by them to uh, save their way of society, stop from being genocided. Mm-hmm. I, I could definitely see that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or you could even argue too that maybe it's not even has nothing to do with the old gods, and they went to whatever their version of of evil magic was to create the others, huh. and that's why they've been their the the old gods turned their backs on the children of the forest or hmm. something like that. It, there's a lot up for debate, which is very fun because that's a lot of the way religions are in our world too. 
is we have a, we have to trust a lot. Not, a, not even just talking about Christianity, talking about any religion. Like you talk about Greek and Roman mythology, something we have a ton of sources on, but those come from a very few sources. And as Greek mythology kept going on, people would say, oh, well, uh, Zeus totally came here and slept with this woman. And that's why we have a God here who we worship, but he's one of his children. It's yeah. just weird how that happens. It, it's it's I, it, so so with that aspect, it's always fascinating that that pagan religion normally the the deities and gods are are always having they have particular attributes that deal with some type of vice or virtue. Mm-hmm. Like like there's always there's always going to be one that's good and there's always going to be one that's evil. There's always one that's kind, always one that's hateful. So so it's it's interesting that you have these this duality in it and and to then to then say if i am mad at you i can go to this god and pray and then they'll get you yes yeah yeah Yeah. even too one of the things that sparked this in my mind is what what we have of druidism and its rights Mm -hmm. comes from roman sources who by the way were not their friends Mm. so is it true that they sacrificed people is it true that they did things in a special way like at best we have tertiary sources yeah, because they most of them were illiterate. They didn't write things down. They were more of an oral tradition kind of thing. So this could be a very well what's happening with the old gods here. It's like this has survived, but is it true? Yeah, well, it has to be some truth in it because it survived. Yes, there has to be some some validity in it there because it 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 maintained throughout generations, and not only did it maintain, but it still has an impact in 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 the world today in Westeros. Uh and I mean sorry, in Game of Thrones. So so the fact is that even when they do these spinoffs and everything, like religion is still prevalent in here and and that doesn't matter which one the old, we're gonna see the old gods at some point. They, they, we're gonna have to see them at some point, especially I'm waiting to see them with the uh the uh, the dang my mind just went blank about the dragon. What's the what's the House of the Dragon? House of Dragon. I was gonna say Blood Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So, so uh, the old gods. I, you know, funny enough, like I, I like the old gods because they just seem too laid back. <laughs> uh, they seem too laid back. Like you ain't, you ain't worrying about. They ain't finna do nothing too bad. But, but that's because they're not as powerful as they once were. And so, huh? Here's another thought. So it, so is it that the old gods are not as powerful? Be, is it because they're not being worshipped? I mean, that's certainly, yeah. I mean, you see this in fiction all the time is that idea of if gods don't receive worship, like, are they as powerful as they once were? Uh, You look at American gods, you look at the Dresden files, and that's definitely something you're going to see in all those. It's like, hey, uh, oh man, uh, was it? Yeah, Odin in American gods. It's like, hey, look, uh, this is the American interpretation of me. Like, I got people who believe in what I can do, but they're not worshiping me. So I got to do whatever I can to keep what power I have. That could very well be the case as it comes to the old gods here, as they just don't have enough people believing in them anymore. Yeah. Huh. You know, which, which flies in the face, completely opposite of God. It doesn't matter how many people believe in him. He always is and always will be. So he doesn't need us, no. but he chose to have us anyway. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. 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 All right. Well, next up, we got the faith of the seven, which is going to be your primary religion for Westeros. Uh, so kind of like Christianity in some regards, they have a Trinity figure, although this is seven in one, which I was shocked to learn. I thought they were seven different gods, but not when I actually did my research, no, this is a, 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 a se- septenity, however the heck you want to say that. It's- These are seven aspects, or as they put it in the series, masks that they referred to as. These are the father, the mother, the warrior, the smith, the maiden, the crone, and the stranger. Mm-hmm. Now, this religion originates from Essos. And it was later brought to Westeros by the Andals. And when the Targaryens invaded, they actually adopted that religion as their own when they conquered the Seven Kingdoms. So what do we think about how the Faith of the Seven is portrayed in the series? Uh, I see that as the Catholic Church. Uh, very easily. Yeah, I see that as Catholic Church with the pomp and circumstance and, and all the trying to especially especially the 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 medieval catholic church mm. uh when the catholic church actually had power over the kingdoms in in europe like they were they were the ones who were either um legitimizing 
or not someone's claim to the throne. Um, so I can I can see that, and 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 I also I also find it fascinating that um, these people are crazy. <laughs> like, like I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be funny. No, no, yeah, I know I know what you mean. But 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 those who follow the faith of the seven are crazy. Like uh-huh. like if and I'm not and I'm not trying to and I'm not trying to be funny, you know, because and I. Like, like they they are really fanatics. Yes, they are really fanatics. They have what's what was the uh, group that were going around with the little circle and the, what was the name of that group? Oh, oh God. gosh, uh, I can see them right militant. now. Yes, the faith militant from the High Septon. Yes, the High Septon. It was essentially our Pope figure for the religion. He was he was the, he was the he was the, he was the second Pope. He yes. was the second pope. There were two popes that were fighting for for a, a legitimacy in this faith uh, tradition. But but th- yeah, these these people they yeah they 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 act like they stuff didn't stink. <laughs> yeah, no, they. It's it's it is it, 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 it to in in terms of like religion and faith, like this one, even though it is the faith of the realm and the kingdom. This was the most sinister one of it all. Like the, the, the it, it, I, and I'm not trying to be funny. And I hate if you if you didn't watch it. And if I'm going to say something to spoil it, then then I don't know why you're listening here because we don't we didn't already <laughs> talk about what happened before. You you just in deep, and I appreciate you continue listening. But when 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 uh, Cersei blew up that um the uh, sept, oh, I was like, yo, yo, like what you gonna what you gonna do now, like. What? Yeah, that's actually one of those things I have a major criticism against that. It's like, yeah, I see you're doing that. But then for there not to be a religious civil war after that fact, she she murdered the Pope and there's no religious strife after that. I see that as a little suspect and they were just trying to wrap things up a little neatly. But yeah, I feel you 100 percent. Keep going. No, hold on. Wait, wait, let's talk about this. Let's talk about you. You you didn't I didn't, I didn't think about this. I didn't think that there were there were no there was no outcry from the people from what she did. Yeah, but, but also I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain either because if she did that to the faith of the realm and all those people in it that, that was a part of the courts, I, I ain't saying nothing either. I'm saying, okay, hell, Queen Cersei, <laughs> hell, Queen Cersei, she is the one. <laughs> and, and I guess you can say that's how like they justify it in the show. It's like they're just a, that afraid of her that even you, as outright, you, I'm sorry, you wouldn't be. No, 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 as in like, no, 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 as in they wouldn't rise up against her yeah, I'm because say, yeah, no, they're, they're would, not afraid of her. Yeah, you, you, you have no, if she, if she was willing to do that and sleep with her brother, <laughs> have babies for him. Yes. Okay? Not, not with him, for him. There's a, there's a huge difference, <laughs> but, but no, I, 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 I don't think that there will be no room for no religious uprising. Because they will be too petrified of the one who is now, quote unquote, the head of the church. Did, did she become the head? No, no. She, no, she, she just became queen of the nation, essentially, yeah. again. After killing Tommen and uh, Marjorie, there was no one to really challenge that from a political standpoint. Yeah. But I think from a religious standpoint, as since they were gathering more militant members in their flock, I still think there should have been something in the show that – Reflected that, but I understand they paced things down, pared them down so they could focus on other matters. So it's not like my biggest gripe against the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so it, this particular faith tradition provided the stability of the realm. Um, however, however, and, and forgive me because it's been a while since I've seen the series, but I'm, I'm going to ask this stupid question. Is it, where was there, where are there any conflicts between the old gods, the followers of the old gods and the faith of the, I know it had to be, I don't remember. Yes. Uh, remember. Not to the point of like a religious war or anything. It kind of become when the seven kingdoms got taken over by the Targaryens. Uh, the Targaryens adopted the faith of the seven, but they said, you can still worship this up here as long as you also worship this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like um, kind of an anti. Did you ever play Skyrim? No. 
Okay, so there's something in there that happens where they worship this ninth god known as Talos, who is a human who became a god. But after this war they have, there is a moment where the elves, who don't think a human should ever ascend to godhood, Mm -hmm. are pretending like it never happened. And they force the empire to sign this treaty after they fight them in a war that says Talos isn't a god. Okay. But you have people in Skyrim who still worship him as a god. And some of them join the Stormcloaks, which is a mistake in my opinion. And then some of them just do it in secret. So it's kind of kind of the opposite of that in that they can do it openly in a way. If we know our Japanese history as well, mm-hmm. we get the uh, – gosh, I can never get their name right. It's like the uh, Harakuri, Kakakuri, Kurishitan, which are like hidden Christians who mm-hmm. when the, the Shimabara Rebellion fell, worshipped Christ in secret and then started putting their own kind of things on it to where it didn't – wasn't fully Christianity anymore for some of them. Mm-hmm. So they didn't have to deal with that. It's more like they can still open worship the old gods, but the seven takes priority is what's supposed to happen. But obviously it doesn't for them. Right, 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 right. But, but. I, I know I just threw a bunch of history and no, random facts that you write no, there. No, 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 no. But, but, but you got me thinking in the series, even though religion is in the f- background, it is still a part of it is still part of how they function and flow because every region of the uh, show had their own faith tradition. Every region of the show had their own faith tradition. And so, and so I was wondering like when you had, uh, um, I'm trying to think about who I want to just, let's just deal with Ed art being beheaded. Right. Yes. And Aria, was like, you know what? Not today. Not yes. Today. Not today. Right. Um, but 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 for her to then abandon her own faith tradition to then embrace something else that was totally countercultural to what she knew to yes. actually to actually help her meet the ends of uh, to to get to the ends of a mean I mean means of an end. It's it's fascinating that you see these type of it's not even clashes, but no, it is, it is a clash of ideas and traditions and norms, but it's only a clash when one region or one portion of the kingdom comes and encounter the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you will never see that any other time. Like there's no there's no religion fights or religious fights or fanat- fanaticism besides the, besides the faith militants. But outside of that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's more of one of those in the background kind of things for why they do what they do. Mm-hmm. Why they have why the North has such a uh, sense of honor is because of the old god religion and what it teaches and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we got three more religions we got to cover for the end of this show. Okay, okay. How much time we got? So we'll figure that out when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So next up on our docket we have the Drowned God. Mm-hmm. Now unique among the religions in this world, this one is only worshipped in a very specific part, and that's by the Ironborn, who all claim descent. From the Drowned God. Now, to my Cthulhu Mythos Lovecraft fans, obviously, there are a ton of references to his work in there. The true nature of the Drowned God's appearance and actions are very similar to Cthulhu and the the old Elder Gods as well in the Mythos, as well as the possibility of them sharing genetic ties to their God. That's something that's brought up with the idea of the way the Deep Ones act within the Mythos, kind of this human hybrid between these almost deity figures and humanity, but also they kind of weird, share this weird connection to Christianity with their baptism. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, let's unpack all of that, you know? Yeah. All right. So, so the, the drowned gods. <sighs> it's like, so, okay. We're going, we're going, we're going, this is, it's so much to, to deal with, but, but I, I, I'll, I'll just say this. The fact that you have, these individuals who believe and this i mean this is a, this is a small set on on the whole continent or the in the whole actually in the whole universe um this is one of the smallest sets however their belief system permeates in everything that they do that prov- provides for them the, the it, it provides for them the the actual understanding of what water is again this is going into the baptism that water in of itself is life and death mm. like like if you do not respect water it will it will overwhelm you or kill you 
Very true. And, 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 I, and I'm not talking about it. This is just in a literal sense. If you do not respect <laughs> yes. water, it will kill you. It will kill you. But but to have that type of reverence for their God and their faith tradition speaks to how they honor and respect life. They, they that now now granted they are still some ruthless crazy inbreds. They they are they are ruthless and crazy. But but I believe that they have a I, I out of all the faith traditions in 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 Westeros, I believe this one huh, funny enough is closer to Christianity and how it views their god and life and death, not in how they worship. No, I agree. I agree completely in that regard. I mean, when you get to that baptism, which we look at it as it doesn't save you. I mean, there are certain sects of Christianity who do think it does, but like it's this act of I am submerging this old man, this old woman under the water. And once I come back out, I am a new creation. And they take this very literally. Very literal. Very and literal. to the point where some people don't make it out alive. Yeah, no. And it, and 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 they were like, you know what? What no? What's the what's the saying that they say? Oh my gosh, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember what they're saying. Uh-huh. They had a saying. They had a saying. I'm a, I'm going go, go on. I have to look it up. But it's this idea in the series proper of we're putting you down in this water. You're going to die. We're going to literally drown you to death, and then we're going to give you this breath of life. And isn't that exactly what God does to us? Like killing that old man who we used to be and then putting his life inside of us. It's obviously, you know where he get, he's getting this from in Christianity and it's played darkly. What you figured it out? Yes, it is. It is. Uh, what, what is dead may never die. Yes. That also comes from the uh, Cthulhu mythos as well. And yeah, what is dead may never die. And it's such, like I said, a dark take on the new life being gifted through the, act of baptism that 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 if you do not respect the authority of the drowned god you were literally drowned because of the drowned god yes <laughs> and they would they would be like you know what he's supposed to die that like like in this ritual you you got to come up on your own mm. ain't nobody ain't nobody help you up you got to come up on your own out that water and if you don't come up Guess what? That's where you, that's where you're gonna. That's where your grave is. Is in the water. Is in oh, the yeah. water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. So 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 this whole ritual that they have, um, is funny because that is that is a part of the ritual of baptism, you know. And and so just to just to just to preface, uh, there are there are. Well, I'm I'm Methodist, so so we believe in the three different modes. Modes, different modes, sprinkle, pour, and immersion. That's only out of convenience, and the person that wants to be baptized is up to them. Um, because most of our churches didn't have baptismal um pools or fonts. No, no, it's a bat, it's the baptismal. What's mm-hmm. the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, uh, I should know this. It's not a baptismal <laughs> font because the font is the little, the little bowl. Yeah, we're all picturing it. Yes, we yes. You can't say the word. You know exactly what I'm talking about, y'all. Y'all know it's written behind a preacher with Jesus in the background, some <laughs> little glass <laughs> with the pool. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so 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 we, but but even even in the even in the ritual that they say, um, let your servant be born again from the sea as you are, blessing with salt, blessing with stone, blessing with steel. That that with salt, stone, and steel. It's almost like I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. So that there's a lot. There's a lot of again. I, there's a lot of there's a lot of parallels with with Christianity and in the ritual side and the and the faith and how they um how they worship the drowned God and respect the drowned God. But then you take the faith of the seven. That's that's where the that's where the hierarchy of the church is seen. That's where the pomp and circumstance of the church is, is recognized and seen. That's okay. We do need to move on to our next topic. Okay, let's move. All right. This, of course, being the worship of R'hllor, or however the heck you want to say his name. Lord of Lights. Yes. He'd be the Lord of Light and Fire, and he is opposed by a god of darkness and ice called the Great Other. Obviously, in the show, you kind of get that sense. Maybe it has something to do with the White Walkers. Who knows? 
There's a lot up for debate, especially since you won't finish the books. <laughs> so what this does is it kind of makes this worship of R'hllor kind of a, a Manichaean and Gnostic religion in some respects. It's like there's this duality of, you know, a good God and an evil God and yeah, places them both as equal figures and opposite. It's like in your more Gnostic takes on Christianity, Satan has just as much power as God or the Demiurge has his just much power as God depending on where we're going with that. Gnosticism is a weird, is. wild ride. It is. But Martin himself, he cites, and I always screw up this word, so I have to think before I say it, Zoroastrianism and Catharism as inspirations for this religion. Now, Catharism is uh, a heresy that originated from France. That's how you know it's a heresy. And at this point in time, uh, it's kind of a duality as well of their good, ultimate good, and ultimate evil, and their equals. Now, that's not all they have to offer. It's very bare bones understanding them so we can understand R'hllor. And like with the other religions, we've seen explicit times when R'hllor seems able to affect the world and even bring people back from the dead. Yes. I mean, is uh, we've asked this question before. Is it because he's real or is this just some weird kind of magic we don't understand yet? Well, to them, those who worship the Lord of the Lights would be like, it's real. And those who are looking at it on the outside are like, that's just magic. <laughs> <laughs> that's just magic like literally like when when john snow woke up oh whoa okay yeah. so the, is the lord of the right real for real he must be because uh he got up <laughs> i mean something happened there something happened there and when when uh when the red priest asked him what did you see or where did you go he said darkness mm. he said darkness so, so that just says that there's nothing beyond this life uh, for them, um, and everything is being fought in real time amongst these two entities, and humanity is just the puppets that are being used to really gain or obtain power for the one, either the light or dark, darkness, which, which brings me to the thought of Avatar, mm -hmm. Korra. Uh, when, ah, uh, Jesus, um, uh, ah, what was Vatu, Vatu and, um, what was the other one? Ah, uh, ah, uh, I can't, Vatu Rava, and the Rava, other Rava, one. Rava. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Rava, Vatu and Rava, when they were fighting amongst themselves and they could not gain any, any edge because they were equally matched until the avatar was, was, uh, manifest. And that's when that's when everything shifted until Rava dis is it Rava? It's Rava, yes, yeah, when Rava when Rava went away and there was no more connection to the Avatar. But wait, she got it back though. Did, no, she did not. She did no, not. She, she did no, not. She, she's totally new. She's lost all access to the other avatars. Yeah, so she's a new she's a new new avatar. She's yes. a new new avatar. Yeah. That was that was <sighs> quick side note. So if you want us to talk about Avatar. In this particular aspect, put it in the comments. Like seriously, I know I know oh, some yeah. guys in our did, did did topics on on the Avatar, the Last Airbender, but but we need to we need to get prepared for the new live action series because the movie was mm. cool. The Absolutely. Movie, oh my gosh. Well, I've got some season by season reviews in our uh, topics page. You want to add yourself to that? Oh, thank you, thank you. See, see, see. Okay, I'm I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. For All that. right, I'm gonna be there for that. But 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 as you were saying. But but when you when you see the duality and then then there is there is no winning there is no winning because if one lose everyone loses because you can't have more light than you can't have more darkness no because you got to have both and that's right you got to have both life is set up that you have to have some sunlight and you got to have some darkness how else are you gonna get rest how is you gonna get sleep how else are you gonna how else are you gonna get food or you know, sustenance or whatever it is that you need you have to have a balance of the two and so when 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 you see the fight between the, the Lord of the Light and the, the the darkness, I can't even think of his name. Oh my gosh, I remember was that was that when when the red priest had that baby for uh for Stannis? Stannis was that was, kill that was that the Brindley. Lord of the Lights? Yeah, was that the Lord Yes, I was just about to bring that up. And I have my suspicions that the Lord of Light may be a kind of Satanish figure in the Game of Thrones universe because if we remember our exodus we do see priests in, under pharaoh's command who are able to replicate some of the miracles some of the plagues given but they're not able to do all of them perfectly 
because Satan is able to give a semblance of what God can do. Mm -hmm. So I think, especially with the shadow demons being a thing the Lord of Light can do, and Satan being a figure who appears as an angel of light, we may be there too with the with the lore. And I think he's acting as kind of a shadow to whatever actual, if there is a God, which I highly doubt with the way Martin views you know, the world, that there is an actual God in his world. No, no, no. But I think it's going to be someone who has seduced all these people into thinking he's a God of light and like an actual God of light versus someone who just took on that shape to get people to worship him. Yeah. And I think the resurrections we're going to see, especially we have Lady Stoneheart in the books, that being Catelyn Stark, for those unaware, she comes back wrong. And I think that may happen to John too, if that's the take they do go with this. And that may be why John may come back and start helping people, but he's not going to be himself anymore. That's my yeah. uh, crazy tin pot theory for that. No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Think about think about when when John was was revived at the Night Watch. Mm -hmm. He was no longer the Lord Commander of uh, oh Jesus of uh, not the Night. What do they call the Night Watch? Night Watch. He was no, he was yeah. no longer the Lord Commander. Yes, he could have still been. He could have still been, but how would that work? Because if he died and they're like, now his watch has ended, that means that he's no longer bound by the oath that mm -hmm. he took to become a night watchman. Yes. And so guess what? John was like, I, I'm no longer a night watchman. But his friends were like, wait, you still Lord Command? No, I, no, I'm not. I, I, my, 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 I'm done. <laughs> I have literally given my life for this. And there's nothing else I can give. I'm out. But but you deal when you deal with that type of influx that this particular faith tradition is funny enough, it was, it was an escape for John to actually then do what he was destined to do anyway. Yes. And it's it's fascinating to think that if that never happened, he would have never, he would never none of none of if he never died and came back. None of the stuff after after he was stabbed because we thought everything we thought we thought it was over. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was like this cannot be it. It is done. John Snow was we knew John Snow. No, nah, but the fact that he came back it changed it changed the trajectory of everything else in the storyline after Game of Thrones. I believe that was the climax right there. I think that's one of the reasons why Martin's taking as long as he is if he's writing at all because he doesn't know how he wants things to go. And he's written draft after draft, so. We can speculate about that all day and be miserable about the fact we don't get what we want. But let's move on to our final entry for today. And it's a very short entry as far as Game of Thrones is concerned, but it has very huge repercussions for the series because of what happens there. And that's, of course, being the believers of the Great Shepherd, who are the Lazarine people we find uh, all across where the Dothraki are. The Great Shepherd is also known as the Lamb God. And it's kind of really easy to see what this is inspired by because of its imagery and their beliefs that they're all part of one flock under his control. They're very pacifistic kind of people. And it's also in their name is a portmanteau of Lazarus and Nazarene, mm -hmm. which got to say pretty clever by George on that regard. I'll give him that. I didn't think about that. That is, that is cause you know, well, for those who are not familiar, if anyone is professing to be a Nazarite that in the Bible, they are, particularly making a vow of no no longer drinking hard wine or spirited drinks, um, not eating any food. They're going to grow their hair out. They're only eating certain um, berries and, and honey and uh, water. That was it. That's, that's it. And you're, again, you're making that vow um, that, that this is what it's doing. And then once your vow is ended, then you can cut your hair and you can move on with your life. Uh, but most of the time they did it for life. They did it for life. Yeah, um, oh, I just you just told me something. I I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, see, we're all learning something today. Yeah, no, that, that was a fun time. That, 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 like, because I was thinking, I was thinking, that, and, and please forgive me, but I was thinking that we was going to talk about the faceless God. Mm -hmm. I thought we was gonna yeah, that's one of the ones. If we do another episode on this, there's still plenty we can talk about. We got to do another one, please, please, for the love of everyone. I'm telling you all, we got to do the faceless God because that yeah. that oh. And you see, I pared it down to five, and look how long we're going. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, over, we're over an hour. I'm like, oh, we need, we still ain't, okay, okay, so let me Okay, go. okay, so, so continue. So we see the Dothraki attacking the Lazarine people, essentially wiping them out, and 
blah, 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 whatever her name is. There's a lot of there's a lack of vowels in her name. Yes, yes. it's very frustrating. She comes to Daenerys as she has Khal Drogo's child inside of her, as Khal Drogo is about to die, and then uses blood magic to harm him. Now, what do we think this say this says about how Martin views Christianity? That the worshippers of the Great Shepherd get genocided. And one of its last believers, instead of seeking forgiveness like what they're taught, seeks revenge via blood magic to kill Daenerys' child. <sighs> Martin is just mad at his mama. Okay. He's just mad at his mama. That's that's <laughs> I I to say it like that, but but I'm like, this is this I mean, like to to cause there's there's a lot of parallels with Christianity with this one. This is a huge and to 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 say that the savior of this particular faith tradition comes through blood magic and is born out of a contract and all this other stuff and then dies and and it's and then the the only person who is there is a woman that brings mm. all these people together um versus a man and she's the one who actually has a the right to claim the Iron Throne and all it, it's it yeah Martin has a problem with his mama okay I'm I'm y'all think I'm crazy but I'm telling you that this man does not like his mama or did not like his mama okay he might be okay it. now he may not let us give him that hug if we keep going I'm telling you listen <laughs> listen, listen the next time anybody sees Jordan Martin um just give him a hug okay just say here guy just just. I, and whisper to you, to him, say, I love you. Okay. That's all. And then just walk away. Amen. Yeah, just walk away. But, but, yo, like, like they, they had, they had the, they had this idea that, you know, their belief in, in, um, in the shepherd will always guide them and harness and provide for them. And I'm like, yes, this is, this is where I could get down. This is where I could get down, um, but Martin was Martin was harsh on these. He wasn't people. having it. No, he wasn't having it at all. Like, and and the fact that they got they got wiped out, um, to where there was literally almost nothing left except for those who was with Daenerys. Yeah, it was like, yo, that's why you got to do that. Why you got, why you got to do that? That ain't that ain't fair. I, I sense a lot of spite. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but against Christianity as a whole. So and he, he, this may be a way of his catharsis. Mother, his mother is Catholic. Okay. His mother is Catholic. He is <laughs> mad at his mother. Okay. You say what you want. He is mad at his, he is not mad at his, he is mad at his mother. Okay. I mean, we've all done something similar where we imagine a situation where someone who's wronged us, they get what we think that is coming to them. Yes. It's like, yeah. Oh, this is, this is what you did to me. Well, I hope God does 10,000 times worse to you. Forgetting the point of why we're at this thing is because none of us deserve to be where we're at. Not a single one. Not me. Not you. Not Billy Graham. I don't care who. No one deserved God. And yet he offered it anyways. And I think that's amazing that we need to learn not to seek revenge. We do need to seek justice. There's a big difference. Yes. And the big difference is what God says is justice is justice. What I say is justice isn't always true. Right, 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 right. It, it, God's justice is just for everyone. <laughs> God's justice is just for everyone. It ain't just for particular. It, no, it's for everyone. And and whether you feel like you are, <laughs> whether you feel like you are, you are, you are outside of the realm of God. No, 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 no. The Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. Okay. Mm. And at, at the end of it all, we're going to have to give an account for what we believe or don't believe. And you don't want, you don't, Jesus said, do not be concerned about the one who can harm the body, but be more concerned about the one who can condemn your soul. Mm. Do you hear me? I, it's it. I don't want uh, my soul condemned. Nope. I don't want my soul condemned. No, no, I don't want that. I, I don't, I want, so, so listen, 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 listen. If you, <laughs> I hate to do this, but if you had never confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, you could do it right now. <laughs> you could do it right now. It's it, time for that altar call. It, 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 like, like, no, no, I ain't trying to be funny, but, 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 but you don't want, you don't want, you do not want to find at, when you come to the end of your life and you wake up on the other side of, of, of this life and God says, come 
or get thee behind because I knew you not. Mm. That's that's going to be, and that's it. That is it. That that is that is it. Ain't no coming back from that. None. Once you make that, what's that? Once it's done, it's done. <laughs> you better choose right. You better choose, choose. Just be saved. Just say, "Come into my heart." Thank you, Lord, and bless your name. Okay, that's all you got to do. There you go. Well said. All right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask you a dangerous question. Okay. For as long as this episode is gone, do you have anything else you'd like to discuss before we wrap things up? I, listen, I I. I'm going to say we need to do another show on the journey of Arya Stark. Okay. That that we just need to do a show on the journey of Arya Stark, and then that we can t- then talk about the faces God as well because her her evolution and growth is is I, she was my favorite character. I didn't even know she was my favorite character. Yeah. Like I like. Feel you. Yeah, like 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 you was rooting for her every time because you, you knew something was off of her. She was like, I, I ain't trying to put these dresses on. I'm out here trying to fight. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, let's let's do it. And, and and when she when she when she uh got revenge for her her family at the red wedding, all oh, for the red wedding, oh <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Whoa, oh, that was so that was so good. That was so good. So yeah, that's 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 the wrap up of, of saying put it in the comments, people, that you wanna you wanna Arya Stark episode. Just Arya. Right. So what I'm hearing is we need to do an Arya Stark character dive episode. Yeah. And then we need to do another episode about what other religions are left. Yes. And there are plenty to choose from. There are still plenty. There, wait, wait. Uh, so we got the uh, Lord, Dr. Faces Man. What else are we missing? Oh, gosh. We've got, there are a ton of smaller ones that we could talk about. There's from lands that we haven't even seen in the show, but they talk about. Uh, there's other lands as well. I, you know, maybe making this up of where there's this supposedly. I mean, maybe even mixing series of an emperor who hasn't died and they kind of worship him and whatever is beyond what's happening there. Once again, I cannot remember. It's like Kiti or Yiti or something like that. I'd have to look it up. So don't trust me on that. But there's still a lot out there we could do. So in the interest of saving editing, Josh, less time, more time. How have you phrased that right now? My mind's a little gone. Guys, thank you for listening to this episode. This was a ton of fun doing this i'm so glad Kino put this up on our topics list and speaking of topics if you guys have something that you want us to do let us know we have it on the website set up to like hey uh what would you like us to discuss uh, Kino, you're going to be on that episode with tron with will right later on yeah yes and that happened <laughs> because someone sent it in so guys we do listen to what you have to say as well guys please just Check out our Discord, our YouTube, our Patreon to help us out in any way you can. If you can't give us money, that's just fine. This is how it happens. The world kind of sucks monetarily right now. Just I don't follow. Blame you. Just follow. Follow. Yeah. yeah. Just follow us. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want us to improve on. Please, if you have the chance as well, leave us a five-star review on your podcasting platform of choice. Kind of helps increase the spread of the show, helps us reach more people. Like, tell us how you found us too. We'd like to know that as well. Before all that, remember we are all a chosen people. A geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.